Welcome to a new episode of Outside the Panels with your host, Johnny the Machine Hughes. Welcome everyone to a new episode of Outside the Panels, the original creator interview show. Joining me this time around, we have two creators, uh, the hugely brilliant can't say that too much uh vampirella valentine special for 2021 we have um tom snigowski mm -hmm. yes got it right and janine, here we go janine atchison very good <laughs> <laughs> i have i do have a bit of a mutant power in getting everybody's name pronounced completely wrong because, you know, I'm a Brit, you know. <laughs> is it an A? Is it a R? Is it a word? No, it's fine. Okay. All right, guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, talk about your fantastic book. Um, this is the Vampirella um, Valentine Special for 2021. Um, we'll get into the book a little bit uh, in a little while. But first, got to ask, Tom. Yes. You're a, you're a you're a comics veteran, my friend. You've been, I am. A, I show you. I can show you the scars. Yeah, you've been around the block, as they I say. Have, I have. <laughs> and Janine, <laughs> you're, you're something of a newbie, is that right? I'm a total newbie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. how did you two? How did you two get on then? How did you two meet, Janine? Start us off. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Here we go. Are you ready? I'm uh -huh. ready. Uh, we knew each other in high school 40, <gasps> almost 40 years ago. How many years? Uh, Almost 40 years yeah. ago. Yeah. For Tom, I could believe it. Janine, I won't say that. <laughs> I know. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. We, um, we were friends in high school. He was two years ahead of me. We met on um, the set of a school play. And then a year and a, almost a year and a, a little over a year ago, I was, um, I'm a school teacher and I was, um, preparing a new unit and it was about books and movies and which is better and part of the unit was was bringing outside actual real people into the school to talk about their lives and talk about their careers and their their books and their movies and i knew that tom had had um what three of his novels actually turned into movies and i thought i'm gonna call my old high school friend and i sent him an email and the rest is history cool all right so tom how did you manage to uh con swoggle janine to help with a comic book you know what it was, it was funny because once once we kind of reconnected i got a sense that she was kind of interested in writing in general okay and actually showed me some of her uh, short work and stuff like that like short stories and things like that and we started working on a novel together okay and while working on the novel together she would see me kind of darting out of the novel to go work on a Vampirella script or young hellboy or whatever the hell i was working on at the time and she there was a certain mm -hmm. level of fascination there that she's had with comics and i was like hey why don't i show you how to do comics too we're working on a novel we might as well work on a comic too cool. so i pulled her into Vampirella, <laughs> Vampirella Valentine's issue, whether she wanted to or not. Yeah. <laughs> so you were, so truly the only per person bitten in the whole vampire, Vampirella story is you, right, Janine? It's just me. <laughs> yeah, just you. <laughs> so, guys, all right, so you've worked on novels together, you've worked on comic books together. How is it different? How is it different working on a comic book to working on a novel or vice versa? Who should we go with? Tom, we'll go with you first on this Do one. you want to go with me first on that yeah, one? Yeah, and then, then right. it bounces me. The, the the thing is, is there's an enormous difference between comics and and novel writing anyway. Just usually a novel is completely immersive. Like I'm usually working on it by myself, spending way too much time inside my head. So with Janine's involvement, that altered the, the writing the novel writing process a little bit because now I had somebody to actually bounce ideas off of and you know it, it was a more, much more collaborative whereas a novel is usually just me mm -hmm. uh, but with a comic that's like 100 percent collaborative and it's also you, you're dragging an artist into it mm. as well 
Um, and even just the, the mechanics of doing a comic is completely different just because of the fact that you, it's almost like a movie script in right. terms of how if, you, if you're working full script, which is usually how I work. Mm -hmm. um, so with, with Janine, she had to kind of almost like learn that way of thinking. All right, okay. Page, okay, page on. one, panel one, what do we see? What yeah. do we want the artist to draw? Panel, you know, page one, panel two, what do we see? And then, uh, and then with dialogue and captioning and stuff like that. So there was a big difference, whereas a book, you're just kind of writing, you know, you just, right, okay. you know, dialogue and every, everything's all kind of thrown into the same pot. Whereas a comic book script, it's kind of, it's much more mechanical. It's much more okay. broken broken down uh, much more by steps that you have to do to get okay. go. Well, I imagine I imagine that when you write a novel it's quite quite um it, it's your idea isn't it it's kind of mm -hmm. your thoughts straight down typically it's how job's done exactly and then right, Janine, okay. and then Janine comes in and says no that's not right and Excellent. <laughs> changes it is that how it works Janine are you the uh, are you the, are you the wait a minute that's not going to work yeah we've had a we had a couple of times where we were um, we were drafting things, and because we were coming at it from two different perspectives, we weren't really sure. Like we had to talk about where people were in the room and what did the room look like, because I was saying, "But that doesn't work," and he's saying, "It works fine." So <laughs> there were a couple of times when we realized that we weren't thinking of the same thing. Although most of the time, we really do. We yeah. really have like we joke about having one brain, but mm -hmm. I think it really, like in our novel writing, that really yeah. is is true. A lot of the time, we're thinking the same thing at the same time. It's yeah. very, it's very funny to basically have her seeing a room one way. And I see a room another way, and we're not talking about what the rooms look like. So, yeah. so as I as I'm saying, no, he's coming in the room, and there's the desk. And she's like, no, the desk isn't there. This so, Jenny's so yeah. like, there's a desk. Yeah, <laughs> Where, where's that come from? <laughs> when did he get a desk? <laughs> Who's he again? <laughs> All right, excellent. Okay, so Jenny, first time around the comic book world. Yeah, yeah? tell me. Is Tom a master Yoda where he looks out for you? Or is he a bit of a takeover Ted? <laughs> no, he's like the best Obi-Wan ever. Um, oh. <laughs> he is. No, he's terrific. He um and it's funny because we joke because I'm a teacher and, and we joke about him being my teacher, and I'm very much a student. So the first thing when we first started talking about comics. Um, he gave me a book. He gave me a book about writing comics. He's actually given me two. And I devoured both of them. And, and I'd go back to him with questions and, and just kind of checking my knowledge. So I'm very much, I think, a student when it comes to that. But when we started writing the novel, we really just started with conversations. And we talked mm -hmm. about cool things that Vampirella could do. And then before I knew it, the, the, the comic was written. Yeah, it was it was really an interesting process. Well, it as a really as, as a compliment from an outsider looking in, all right, I will definitely say that quality always rises. All right, so whilst the mechanics of novel writing or um, comic writing might be different, quality will always show, and that shows dramatically. Yes, it's my word; I made it up. <laughs> dramatically throughout this book so well done to the power oh, of you oh, awesome excellent i absolutely you know what I, I was i was hooked as soon as i read the the kind of bit where it says vampirella loses to dracula i was like right i'm bought i'm going in let's see what's going on because <laughs> you know, it's like you know it's, it's, it's the the ultimate big bad yeah you know it's, it's when dracula beats buffy for the first time you're like i want to watch that i haven't watched buffy for like six six years i've not seen it at all and all of a sudden, I'm watching this one episode. I will come in uni just so I can see Dracula take on this layer. So, uh, <laughs> Dracula you, you got me. All right. So, guys, um, Tom, you've been around comics forever. Who's your Who's your comic inspiration? Who's Where's your influences? Comic. Oh, wise? that's funny because if I if I had to go to the one influence, uh -huh. Jack Kirby, the king. The, the the king. just just the the energy yeah. and the. Uh, the awesomeness of everything that he did is just that was like the germ of is that 
if I may ask, is that the art or is it the art and the script? You know what? He's, I, he's I, got a bit of a knock on his script, didn't he? Uh, Back yeah, in the day. You know, his script, his scripting was so over the top crazy. <laughs> you, you just, you just, you just have to smile when you read it because yeah. it's, it's so nuts that yeah. it's just like the the in, in in the way he sold that nuts. I mean, yeah. you you know, you, it, it's crazy, but I'm reading it and enjoying it. So you you must yeah. be doing something right. Yeah. Cool. And Janine, how about yourself? Oh. Where's your Where's your comic book? My comic book it... era, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at that. It's like I, it's like I fed you the line. Tom, the checks in the mail. <laughs> but true, I think <clears throat> I have only ever read his stuff, and I have. That's, oh, yeah, that's one of my. That's one of the nineties. Yes, cool. Yes. Was that from Was that from Zen Com? Was it Zen who was doing oh, it back Harris, then? Harris. 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 I was getting that run back then, back in the nineties. Yeah, I, 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 I wrote almost all of that. I remember my friends looking down at me saying, "Really? She's a girl <laughs> in a swimsuit? Really?" I was like, "Bite me! You're buying image. What do you know?" <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Which then brings up an interesting question. Then, okay. all right, Tom, you've been around Vampy forever. You love Vampy. I love Vampy. Yeah. Janine, what is it about Vampy that uh, that made you think, oh yeah, this is the one that I'm going to uh, cut my comic book teeth on? That's a good question. Um, Was it the swimsuit? Was it the dark hair? Was it because she does so many crazy things? I do like the dark hair. No, I think that I, I like that that she's kind of a like a torn character. Torn. Okay. I, yeah, I feel like she's kind of torn between her nature and what she has to do and oh, yeah. the person that she wants to be. Yeah, so like, she's torn between like nature. Struggle. Struggle between nature and nurture, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the better demons without sometimes. Yeah. But not all the time. No spoilers. <laughs> Check out oh, that's interesting, right? <laughs> cool, yeah, definitely. all the time. Okay, and Tom, you've been yeah. we've been around the industry so long. Do you feel that Vampirella's been diluted somewhat with the amount of, you know, the, I mean, you look at Dynamite, and I love Dynamite. Dynamite yeah. have, have got to be one of my favorite. I don't know if you can call them indie anymore. The, all right, I'll no. say the one of my favorite non-big two publishers. All right. Yeah. Um, but you know, you've got this vampy book out, you've got the regular vampy book, you've got yeah. Vampy Red Sonia, you've got Vampy Project Dark Powers, you've got loads of you know, you've got yeah. lots of vampy. She's in more books than Batman, and that's saying something, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. So um so do you think there's a worry that the 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 essence that that torn element that Janine's talking about, does that kind of get watered down with every reiteration or version of it, do you think? I think the only problem that would that, that only time that that would be a problem is if the quality if you start to lose the quality mm. I, I think every i think that the beauty of vampirella is that everybody kind of brings their own thing to vampirella mm -hmm. like when they asked me to come back and do vengeance of vampirella mm -hmm. they brought me back to do my to pick up where i left off cool. 25 years ago okay. so so that that was that was so I'm bringing that voice, whereas Christopher Priest is bringing his voice to yeah. the regular monthly Vampirella book. So I think as long as everybody is bringing their own thing and bringing their A game to their own thing, we'll we'll be fine, you know. Okay. Cool, excellent. All right, I've got a technical question for you both. Uh oh, uh oh. Um, I was in I was interviewing um, a couple of writers on the book. It's called um, Space Bastards. Part of my name. They, that's what they called it. Um, and they are very much a duo, just like yourself. I'm always interested when you've got two writers how that dynamic works. Okay. Is someone is someone the plot guy and someone the dialogue guy, or do you kind of think about what you the key points you want and then work towards and backwards? How's that kind of work, Janine? How does that work for you? I think it's really, I think it's with us, it's more like we both come at it from all angles and we kind of talk about the things that we think would be cool. And then somebody says, this would be cool. And then Tom will say, or I'll say, oh, but what if we did this? And we really uh, kind of like built yeah. on the ideas that each of us has together. 
Yeah, there's a real there's a real collaborative. That's the one thing that I found amazing about her after 40 years that there was this amazing like ability to collaborate and me not be a jerk and say no that's wrong. Uh-huh. Which cool. which is my usual case, which is usually how I'm like. <laughs> Sounds like Tommy's a takeover Ted to me like. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. So here's the other question that kind of builds on you Tommy mentioned earlier. And everyone knows comic books are hugely collaborative. You've got yep. right it's yourselves, then you've got the artists and the colorists and the letters and all that yep. sort of stuff. Uh, and of which I want to say the letter for this book was Taylor Esposito. Is that right? No. Um, was it Taylor? Or did I get no, Ramos. Ro- his last name was Ramos. Oh, yeah, no, no. I've got it down here. I'm looking at the cover. Letter of Taylor okay. Esposito. Mm, cool. Um, we'll go back to that then. Um, so, how is it when you when you feel when you get the art back from the artist who is um where we are that's marcus ramos yes yeah um so when you get the art back from marcus how's that feel who does who does the kind of uh that's better than i thought it was going to be or oh my god i don't think that quite works how's that worked is one of you take the lead on that or do you kind of just again i think we, I think we it, it's funny because i think janine's approach to it she'd never experienced that before yeah. mm, exactly is this she, never, she never saw anybody interpret her words in illustration so i think it was really neat to see her reaction to it and then my reaction to it is more like because i've been doing this for far too long um, far too long <laughs> I have I have kind of a more professional version where hers is very excited. You know, like, oh my God, look at that. I've never seen that before. Yeah, so, but, but honestly, um, with, with, with most, most artists nail it. Most, most, we, we, our scripts are usually pretty decent in regards to um, what we specifically want to see. And they, and they, uh, he was great. He, he, was, he, he was terrific. I really enjoyed his stuff. It looks to me that when I, I've looked at the book previously. The art vibe is very much going for the the kind of um, gothic horror vibe, rather yeah. than rather than get mired in the details. Yeah, yeah. But there was something really, really nice about it that that I hadn't seen in any of the Vampirella books that I'd worked on. Uh-huh. It was it was just it was a, just a nice look. And, Definitely. And, and poor Janine had never seen anything like it. Before. <laughs> so, so Janine, when you first got your first page. Uh, so the page on the screen there, the first time you looked at that, what, what sort of impression did you get? Were you like, oh my God, or was it like? I, yeah, I was, <laughs> oh my God, I was stunned. I was stunned. I think we we were on Skype, Tom, when I when we we first, the first pages came through, right? Yeah, yeah, when uh, Joe, Joe Rybant, our editor on the book, sent us like six or seven of the, like the yeah. first pages of the, of the comic, and we were both looking at them at the same time. And that was, yeah. that was cool. It was very cool. It was amazing. Yeah, to see somebody to see somebody picture put pictures to our words was amazing. And I think even if they had been stick figures, I would have been like, "Wow, those are great!" <laughs> they really are awesome. Don't worry, there are some stick figures in there towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I'm always a critic. What can I say? Always a critic. Well, it's fine. It's fine. Um, all right. Excellent. Okay. So. Um, We'll take a bit of a break, take a bit of a breather, all right, before we get on to the next round of questions. Whilst we're catching our breath, and before we start talking specifically about the book itself, um, check out one of our ads. This is Crisis in the Toyverse. This is a podcast that you can get on the UCPN as well as YouTube. Um, check it out. I'm sure sooner or later there will be some vampy stuff on there. <gasps>
every time I see that advert, I just want to so, well, start getting my figures out and like, whoa, this is great. This is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's Bobo's show, Crisis on, uh, in the Toyverse. Check it out. Podcasts throughout the week, different toys, unboxing, the whole nine yards. All right. Okay. Time to get into the book. <gasps> the book itself. So let's get going. So here we are. So, um, the whole idea of the book is that Dracula wins the big battle. Is that right? Yes, it is. Cool. Alternate, alternate reality. Well, see, you, see, oh, see, oh man, you said the said the words now. Oh. <laughs> I hit alternate round. Every, every company's got a multiverse. Every company's got a multiverse. Because it's fun. It's a ridiculously fun concept. Yeah, it's just a little. For me, I've been a I've been a comic book fan since nineteen seventy. Um, so I was around. I was around when DC's, you know, way before Crisis, yeah, uh, on Infinite Earth, way before that. I, you know, I used oh, yeah. to, I used to have to ask my dad, why is Batman and Catwoman married in this one, and who's the who's the dude running fast with a tin plate on his head? What's that all about? Yeah. So, but I get it now. Um, do you think that the uh, just from a, a storytelling point, I guess that the multiverse and alternative realities are quite freeing. But do you not think? Do you think that there comes a point where oversaturation comes in? It's it's just like a massive reset button. Um, but you you know what? I, I don't look. I look at it purely as from a story perspective. I'm not looking okay. at it from like with, especially with Vampirella. The, the, yeah. the fact that you could do an alternate his another an alternate character another another take on the character yeah, it's yeah. just fun because it it, it it allows you to do things that you can't do with the regular character okay. you, can, you can take chances you can set her and put her in different situations different worlds interacting with different characters different personality just it just i don't know it's freeing it's it's, it's fun i guess yeah how does that work for you then janine because this first time <laughs> as we mentioned do you have do you have to worry about things like you know, alternative realities, or do you just get involved in the story and kind of just see where it goes? I think I just kind of am along for the ride and I see where it goes. <laughs> yeah. Very, good. Very good. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. Well, remember, she's, this is totally new to her. So when I'm babbling about alternate realities and alternate alternate versions of Vampirella, she's her eyes are crossing. She doesn't. Really? Yeah. All right. Okay. So so basically, what they made well, the Vampirella came out from. I've got my old timers, old timers comic book show head on here. So Vampirella started out in the late sixties, early seventies. Warren Publishing. She was kind of like a gimmick originally, kind of like yeah. the the monster that introduces. She was the hot chick that introduces the scary stories in comic books. Yeah, basically a bit like an Elvira, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, and then that kind of progressed through Warren. She got her own comic strip. And then she disappeared for a while. Then Frank Frazetta got her and turned her into an absolute sex goddess. Then she went into the indie route, Harris, <laughs> Dynamite, you know. Yep. She's been around the block more times than Tom, bless her cotton sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so I get, I get the idea, sorry Tom, I get the idea that there has to be some level of um, multiverse to, to keep everything on track, because there's no way you're going to tie in every single solitary step along the right. way to get to right yeah it's fine. So I, I apologize if the question seemed facetious. It was no, just kind no, of, no, no, no. it's, um, I see I see so many books. I mean, you can just look at some of the books that are coming out now. You know, you've got DC's Future State, you've got mm -hmm. you know, the you're coming up, you've got he, Heroes Reborn from Marvel coming up, which is yep. the world without Avengers, and you're like yep. you know, it's it's like a comic book fans are only supposed to be in the industry for five uh, read comics for about five years. That's why the ideas keep going round and people like me complain about them all the time. <laughs> 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 all right, so um Tom. Yes, you you kind of you kind of I'm not going to say called me out, but picked me up on something for, uh -huh. my, re for my review. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so I'm full disclosure. Full dis I'm, I'm, hey, I'm already to I'm already told on this. So in my review, which is available on Comic Crusaders, um, I said that one of the things that kind of not annoyed me, but one of the things I noticed was that this is a one shot. Yep. And then towards the end. Yep. The, the idea that there is more to come yeah all right so how did that kind of tom how did that kind of evolve from this kind of like one shot idea to oh there might be more to this 
honestly, it, it, it's as simple as this. We fell in love with the character. We we this this alternate take on the character was just like, you know what? She's really cool. Mm. I, I we we should do something more with her. And and that really wasn't the plan. I actually had to go to the people at, at at Dynamite and say, "Here's an idea. What do you what do you think of this?" And they were they they pretty much they bought it. So cool, excellent. Yeah. Janine, are you along for the ride for the next few packs as well? I am along for the ride, yes. Yes, excellent. Yes. Good, yes. good. I, I, it, she ain't uh, getting out of it this easy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'd, like to put some, I'd like to put some color, some context onto, into, onto my comic, comment. Um, and I think the comment wasn't particularly aimed at you guys. I think it was probably aimed more at editorial. Because um, obviously I don't speak. Dynamite don't ring me up and say, "Oh, Johnny, by the way, we're doing this. Is that all right with you?" <laughs> we don't do that. Um, <laughs> but I've gone through this last couple of years, and it's the things like um, Batman One Thousand, Detective Ten Twenty Seven, The Punchline, The What. It seems every time I pick up one of these specials, and you read through the various stories, yeah. And then at the end, the last one is always, "This will be continued in the autumn of 2021," and I'm thinking to myself. You know what? I've just paid nine dollars for this book, and you can't even tell me a complete story. What's going on? You've got eighty pages. What more do you need? So, my comment wasn't aimed directly at you guys. No, 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 born, no, no. It's born out of my frustration of the market. I actually, I actually thought it was kind of funny that I reached out to you and just poked you and said, "Hey, just we didn't do this on purpose," you know. <laughs> Well, that's what you said. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's cool. So, moving forward, when you think about the how many issues are you talking like a mini series, a, a maxi series? Right, right now we're, we're we're it's in the like the very early planning stages, but right now we're thinking like six, like that's a six cool. issue that could actually turn into something else. But right now, I think we're just thinking of the six. Cool, cool. And from a from a writing point of view, Janine. How's it good change? How'd you feel going from like one issue to six? And then who knows the world is your oyster. <laughs> I think that's fine. I think the reason why <coughs> I originally decided to throw caution to the wind and jump in was because it was just one issue. And I thought, all right, well, if I can do the one issue, then you know, I can handle anything, maybe. Um, and then I don't know the rest of it we just kind of kept on having ideas and we kept on talking about her and talking about her and kind of putting her in different scenarios and having her have different characteristics so it just kind of it kind of took a life took on a life of its own this is how i, this is how I operate <laughs> well, you're, you're looking with the one issue it's like yeah. she, she, can you do me a favor and you know, you know just put the kettle on before you know it, they've made like a whole three cost meal or something <laughs> <laughs> excellent excellent um how was how was working with dynamite tom have you worked with dynamite for a while now yeah i, I have known i have known nick barucci who was the president of dynamite for before since way before he'd even started the company so i've known him forever so cool. he'd always he'd always had the intention of me to me to come back and do vampirella for him but uh, but, but around the the uh was it the is it the 50th was it the 50th anniversary anniversary that's when he really came after me and he said no you've got to come back and and, the, and he enticed me with the and you can pick up where you left off 25 years ago <laughs> that i couldn't say no to that that was because it's the tom verse you know yeah, that, it is the tom verse is that what we're calling it it's a tom yeah, verse. Yeah. We've got like the Mignola verse over in Dark Horse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, got <laughs> my got fingers, I got my fingers in that too. Uh, yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> Janine, he's calling it the Tom verse. Are you going to stand there and let him do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, all right. Um, I have to ask you a quick question, Tom. One of my favorite books of all time was born. Ah. Janine, you need to check out this book. It's um, Jeff Smith. Jeff Smith born. Um, I think I don't. I've, I've put it off. It's predominantly, if you get it in style, it's black and white. It's about three characters um, called Born who get run out of different Borns. There's Phony Born, um, Smiley Born, Smiley Born, and there's another one. There's three. There's three. <laughs> Idiot Born. I don't know. Um, Funny Born. Born. Yeah, um, Born Born. That's right. Yeah, so. Um, and the way it works is they get run out of their town 
and they go across a valley and then again it's all like a lord of the rings mystic type vibe thing but maybe not quite as complicated as tolkien um and one of my favorite parts of born are the stupid stupid rat creatures <laughs> Tom, yeah. you've spent some time with these stupid, stupid I, rat creatures, I, have I, you not? I've spent a lot of time with them. <laughs> so yeah, how was that working on on Born for you? That was, I got a. I always tell this story is I got I, I've known I'd known Jeff for a while for like through conventions and stuff like that, and out of the blue one day I got a phone call from his wife uh, Vijaya, and she just said, "Do you want to write the prequel to Bone?" And after I picked myself up off the off the floor, I was kind of like, "Yeah, I think I, I think I might be able to do that. I, I think I might enjoy that." So that's where uh, that's where the um, stupid stupid rat tails came from. Oh, brilliant! I love I love this. I love the rat creatures. They are there. Do you need the bonkers? All they care about is eating, right? So there's oh, this scene. There's this scene where Thornborn's getting chased by the rat creatures, and he dives off the cliff, and he hangs on to like this piece of grass that's hanging out like a branch or a grass that's hanging off, growing out from halfway down the cliff. And then he turns to his mate, he's hanging off his foot, because that's what they do. He says, I says, oh, they've got to be really stupid to follow us down here. Next panel <laughs> is them two holding onto this thing. The bowels like bent like this and three rat creatures are looking at them like that. And all these, the words like stupid, stupid, and just honestly, I, had, I guess you had to be there. <laughs> this is why this is why comics are visual because when you tell the joke like this it doesn't work <laughs> so it's nothing, it, nothing better than writing that dialogue though oh man that, that dialogue just, all i can think of is here we uh there's that uh, that show frazier yeah yes yeah, like frazier and niles that's how yes. that's, that's how, like an old married couple that's how yeah. that's how i wrote them or me and chris, or me and chris golden either one <laughs> right. yeah cool um I think I've interviewed Chris Golden years ago. For oh, he's a like, interview. Yeah, I'm, I'm his I'm his daughter's godfather. Cool. Check it out. What was it? Was it was it Hellboy? It was doing a Magnolia book. Yeah, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was probably Baltimore, Lord Baltimore. It's a while ago. Baltimore, yeah, because he writes Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's how it was. I mean, I've been doing this for six years. So, you know, how many books have I read from then? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, con season when it kicks off. Janine, will you be joining Tom on the con circuit? If he asks me, yeah. <laughs> if Dynamite yeah. pick up the tab. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> She'll make me pick up the tab. Hey. <laughs> why, why, hey, why not? Yeah, why why not? You ask, you pay. Yeah, yeah. Good, definitely. definitely. Um, so working together, Janine, how many kind of – I'm not going to ask for, like, the split, which is 50-50 or 60-40 or anything like that, but how – you said it's collaborative the confidence is obviously there to come up with the idea in the first place yeah and then you feel comfortable to talk to tom about how to get that into the book is that kind of, am i understanding it right and then you work together yeah. to, to flesh out yeah? yes yeah i i learned early on not to how do i say this i learned early on not to think that any of my ideas were stupid or that I shouldn't say them. Good call. Because he's never said to me, yeah, that's just not going to work. Yeah. We kind of, if I have an idea or if he has an idea, we honestly, truly like talk it out until we both have something that we're both happy with. So my reticence in, in like voicing an opinion or voicing an idea, I got over that really quickly because he's very, like welcoming and accepting of anything that I have to say, even no. if it's really stupid. <laughs> there is no such thing as stupid ideas. Yeah. No, absolutely not. That that's like the big thing that I've always said. No yeah. idea is stupid. Well, no, you say, I, I've had quite a few. You, you, you say that, but you know, Marvel and the Spider Man clones. Oh, that's all, I'm oh. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. All right, so I'm gonna put you on the spot. You ready? Uh -oh. Janine, what's hmm? your favorite part of this book? The battle between Vampirella and Dracula. <gasps> the ending battle? The, the, end, the, the fin yeah, that final battle. Final battle. Yeah. Or is it the final battle? You don't know. Check out the book. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> Tom, same question. What's your favorite bit? Huh. 
Actually, you know what? I really love the scenes with Dracula and Vampirella as the married couple. Yeah. <laughs> castle with yeah. Both, they both being nice to each other and stuff like that. But they, yeah. you, can, you can tell that they probably still really kind of can't stand well, it. I think I think Dracula certainly has a thing for Vampy. Oh yeah. I think, oh, I yeah. think there's a oh, okay. I yeah. think uh, whoever got Vampy's passive aggressive voice for for in this comic book got it bang on perfect. Yeah. If anyone wants to know what passive aggressive looks like, go read this book. <laughs> 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 Compliment is intended. Um I liked you know what? <clears throat> the book's out now. All yeah. right. So the, this pod will be out next week. Uh so the book will be out for a fortnight by the time this goes live. So I think I liked the the character that, that kind of leads the rebellion. You know I've been around the block, so I kind of you, you work out straight away. It's not not a great big secret, but I like how well it was done. You know, I think it's really it's really hard nowadays to kind of pull the wool over people's eyes, um, yeah. especially especially if they've been reading comics for a while. Yeah, you know, um, so I thought that was done extremely well. Um, I thought it was it wasn't. It wasn't kind of like in your face. It wasn't. It was dealt seriously. It was dealt as if it was a, it's stealth and all that sort of stuff. And because you're in that world, you believe it and you go along with it. And that that I thought was a really neat trick, considering, yeah, who it ends up and all that sort of stuff. I agree. I like the battle, uh, Janine, at the end with with Dracula. I thought that was really good. I thought that was really fun. Um, and yeah, the the sarcasm and the dripping sort of like yes, my lord. And all that sort of stuff. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Um, all right. Okay. Um, I normally ask this question, but Tom, I'm, I can't really ask you because you've been, yeah, you've been all over the place. So I'll start with Janine on this one. Janine, are you ready? All right. Yeah. If you if you got the phone call that said, "Wow, your book was so great. Why don't you come and work on one of the characters from the Big Two?" Which one would it be? Are My, there other comic like, books? Like, 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 <laughs> are there other comic books? Bless you. <sighs> so, oh, like the big two, like Batman or Superman? Or yeah, like Marvel. DC, DC the, Comics uh, or Marvel. Marvel yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like Batman. D Batman. Oh, okay. Yeah, she yeah, yeah. the big Batman. Batman fan. You yeah. enjoying the future at the minute? Uh, do you read it? Or? She, no? She, no. Is this, no, no, come, okay. cool. Tom, <laughs> where oh, would you like to revisit? Because you, I mean, I think where, where haven't you stopped? <laughs> you know what? I would, I would love to write the Creeper for DC. <laughs> okay. I would, I would give my left leg to write the Creeper. For... Hasn't he just been in something this, this last? I'm trying to think if they've used it. I mean, they, when they use them, they don't. Yes, he's in future. He's in the future stitches. Oh, he's in. Oh, see, I haven't read those yet, so he's in those. Okay, I love yeah. that character. I I've always loved that character. I remember. <clears throat> I remember. But well, in the UK, I don't know if you guys get them over the states, but we get every year. You get these annuals, like hardback things, like annual 2021 and all that sort of stuff. And if you get like a superhero one, back when I was a kid. They're always reprints, right? Yeah. So uh in the reprint of this one was um Batman Brave and the Bold comic where he's teamed up with the creeper. Oh yeah, is that the one with the Helgramite with the insect guy? Ah, dude, I was a kid, so I can't even remember that. All I remember about it is, is I couldn't even describe the cover. <laughs> is it right, is it the one? Is it the one where the creeper turns up? Uh, and flips Batman off, off the building and Batman Hulk grabs onto his rope and he's like, I'm lucky I left my rope here to catch me as I fell. That's the one. Oh, I don't remember that part. I think it was I think it was Irv Novik was probably the pencils back then. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Or, or Jim Apiro, it's one of those two. Probably Jim Apiro, actually. Because Jim Apiro was doing a lot of... He was doing a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I love Jim Apiro. Cool. So, this hasn't scared you off working in comics at all then, Janine? Sorry, say that again. That this these conversations and this love it hasn't scared you off from working in comics? No. No, it makes me <laughs> want to do it more. Excellent. Does it? Yeah. Oh, okay, oh, cool. Excellent. Oh. Cool. Excellent. Tom, you have a protege there. Do I have a what? A protege. 
I have a protege. Yeah, which yeah, is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, awesome. it's good. She's actually really good at it. She's if, if this book's anything to judge by, I totally agree. Yeah. Um, the novels that you're working on, when are they due out? And are they out now? This is, this is we're still in the, we're in the editing process now. And as soon as that's done, it'll be going off to my agent and it, we'll see if we can sell it. Cool. Checking, checking the spelling and you know all the grammar. Checking the spelling, stuff. making sure that <laughs> we didn't do a character. Where's the desk? <laughs> Where, where's the desk? <laughs> <laughs> where's the desk? Where's the desk? Where's the desk? <laughs> it's funny, you know how you were talking to me at the start, how the difference between movies and books. Mm. Yeah, when you read a book, it's all in your head, isn't it? Yeah, when it's yeah. A, where you, cre you create the whole world yep. um comics are kind of like that stop for me i don't know how you feel about this comics are kind of like that middle ground because you're reading it and somebody's giving you the world to look at as well yeah whereas movies tend to be oh my god there's a continuity era <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah now that everything's streamed you stop now don't you Boof. Yeah, because stop. of the boom mic yeah. the boom mic's there <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I am that sad. All right, guys, thank you so much for taking the time out. That's and it? We, yeah, that's it. We're oh. up. Do you have more to say? I was waiting for something hard. I don't like a hard question. <laughs> a hard question. That's All right, okay, then. So a hard question. You mentioned you're a Jack Kirby fan. Yeah. Why is it that Jack Kirby's work, The Eternals and the Fourth New World, uh, the fourth world and new yeah. gods why is it all the same i think he just was i think he was just fascinated with that eric von dunigan chariots yeah. of god stuff i think he just thought that that was the greatest thing in the world so okay cool he mined it he used it over and yeah. over again my uh my mum <laughs> my mum had chariots of god i remember looking at it when i was a kid and um my mum bless the cotton socks she thinks the Battlestar Galactica, you know the original one from the yep. from the eighties. Yeah. She thinks that's better than Star Wars. <sighs> but she also goes on and says things like, "Well, you know, it could happen. You know, people could be out there fighting their lives." I'm like, "Mom, it's a it's a sci-fi. It's not a documentary. You know, <laughs> just a, just a, just a nice music at the start. You know, how <laughs> It's a wonder I turned out like this at all." <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so, guys, thanks, as I said, very much thank for you. taking the time out. Thank you. Um, thank you for reaching out over Twitter. I really do appreciate oh, it. Oh, I was just being a jerk. We weren't. Hey, man, you know what? I absolutely love it when creators come back and talk to me about the book, you know, because yeah. I think to myself, how else, you know, I'm, a, I'm not supposed to, I'm, I'm just a fan. I'm not, I'm a fan who gets to read comic books and then I write about them, all right? That's how it works. Yep. I'm not in the, as I say, I'm not in the inner workings. No one from DC rings me up. No one from Marvel says whatever. However, I did complain about Birds of Prey so much it got cancelled. So I don't know. That's <laughs> that was you? That was me. I don't know. <laughs> but um, so, you know, I'm just a fan. So when guys reach out to me, you know, it, it's an absolute honor that, first of all, you read the review to oh, know wow. that I said that. I mean, I see people tweet the reviews and retweet them. And yeah. I think, oh, that's nice. Cheers for that. But when someone comes back and says, oh, but about this point, it's like, you know what? You've taken the time to read what I've said. Yeah. Oh, and I think that's wow. that's an absolute honor. It's an absolute pleasure that when somebody comes back and says, ah, but this, because then I'm thinking, well, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the answer. I mean, it's the same with, same with Terry Esposito. He was on Twitter for ages saying how letters don't get respect. Yeah. And... Um, I invited them on the show. I said, come on on the show, talk to me about letters. Now I make sure that every review on Comic Crusaders talk about the colours, talk about the lettering. Even if it's just something to say that the letters don't impact the pace of the story. Right. Just just something about the letters, because it yeah. is about that. You're not going to be reading this book. Right. So, right. Right. Um, cool. So yeah. Love it when people get involved. Well, Janine's going to gonna frame, Janine's gonna frame that review, I bet. That's <laughs> really going to frame it. That's her first review. That's her first yeah, review. It was. 
Yeah. Was it excellent? Yeah. Um, I, I checked the review before I came on the on the pod, and I gave the rating the most stars. So, yeah. <laughs> and the and the flip of the flip of it, and I say this, I normally say this, um, off air, but I'll say it on air this time around. I don't invite people on the sh- onto the show if I don't like the books. It's that simple. Because I find it really disingenuous for me to be a smiley, happy face when I'm thinking inside, man, this book sucks. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the easiest way not to get caught in the lie is not to tell one. So I only bring on people who, whose work I like and the book I like, and we can have fun talking about them. So and you guys absolutely, totally fit that bill. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, Vampire, uh, Vampirella. Um, Van- Valentine's special 2021 is out in the stores now. Go pick it up. It'll yeah. be available on Comicsology and all the other online stuff. If you can't get your comic book store because of various COVID stuff, remember stay safe. Check to see if your store is doing curbside pickups or click and collect or whatever it is with truck going on. All right. All right. Stay safe. And don't forget to check out the UCPN for all your favorite podcasts, including Crisis in the Toyverse, the Old Timers Comic Book Show. And flip side focus, where we talk about indie books, and you can bet your bottom dollar that uh, we'll be having a few words about this Vampirella book. That's Uh-oh. how good it is. Because <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> all that's left for me to do is say, This is Join the Machine Hughes saying thank you very much and adios. Visit UndercoverCapes.com for the latest and greatest podcasts via the Undercover Capes Podcast Network. Also visit our parent company website, ComicCrusaders.com, all about comic pop culture.